so many druids and dragons are always popular so that's why what we're doing now is we're looking at a particular replay of a request by the twitch chat and looking at here as a goblin player it's hard for me to refuse goblins but i have kept my empty mage for the first round and we'll be skipping here a little bit so well, the chat was talking about draw rangers apparently right now there's three players with two star draw rangers and it's such a surprise that so many players had draw rangers at this early in the game so we found out two star anti mage which is an excellent start as some of you might see my tier list are empty mages the one star one cost anti mage is actually my top of the list similar with bounty hunter they are my S, S rated one cost units. There are two reasons why this is the case. The first reason is anti mage wins us the fights in the first few rounds, and this takes us into a winning streak. Secondly, anti mage is a demon hunter, counters demons, and thirdly, anti mage is an elf, so he enjoys the evasion that we'll be using. So he is actually a top unit for us. Here we're looting some items, and on the fourth round, Usually I like to explain the fourth round and the strategies behind it. Over here on the fourth round we just found a Luna, so there isn't that much to be introduced other than the fact that we need any liner that helps us to win the round. And over here, let's have a look how we go with this round. We managed to find someone who is relatively weak. We have anti mage as 2-star, they have a 2-star Joranger. Remember I said there's so many Joranger's, so we actually found a Joranger. Here, I didn't pick the Luna, which is a mistake out of habit, which I should have done was spying the Luna, so that was the first mistake I made in this game. Now, remember we were saying we wanted to go Beast, or we wanted to go Elves? Because I didn't pick the Luna, I am very much inclined to go Beast right now, and our goal was to run Beast, Elves, or Dragons. So right now we're going to diverge ourselves into the beast side. And as you can see, I'm putting units I feel that's more valuable, the four, that's on the table. So looking over here, what would some of the decision making be at this point? Let me break it down with you guys. And I think I can share some insight regards to the, how we're commenting on the courier, how nice and how like beautiful the courier this guy had, which he just attacked me. Over here you can see the flame courier. So some of the ideas right now, let me share with you. So firstly, we're going to see the row. I think special comes. And we'll get a razor. And this is the thing. Let me pause for you for a sec. Let me, sh after this actual movement, let me pause for you for a sec. Yeah. Let me show you what exactly happened here. We are not on a winning streak, we just lost the last round. Now there's two things to keep in mind. If we look at a race table, very soon I'll switch to it. We want to know what happens when we level from level 4 to level 5. I started with we don't have a winning streak because that's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's economy. If I have a winning streak, leveling up might give me a might break my might break my losing streak but will, will continue my winning streak so leveling up was almost a default to level up here if i'm on winning streak but if i'm not on winning streak and i'm not on losing streak the decision making comes into what am i getting what units do i want how will leveling from level four improve my rates given that i don't need to win next round i can stay on level four that's when we look at the race table so let's have a look over here the race table, which I made those calculations, and for those who are unfamiliar with this table, please do have a look at my video for the race table. So I'm going to skip, jump right into it. At level 4, I have 17%, the highest percentage for 1 star unit, and I have 11.54% for the 2 star unit. This is Those are the chances of me finding a particular unit I want that is level 2, that is 2 cost. So what does this mean? If I want to find a timber saw when, when I'm level 4, it's 11.54% to see a timber saw out of the 5 units. Now, if I were to level up to level 5, my 2-star rate units are unchanged for this level. I gain increase rate for 3-star units, I gain increase rate for 4-star units. So it's 0.76% for me to find a long druid at level 5, given one of those rows of 5 units. So. 
I'm losing my one cost rate. I'm gaining three costs and four costs. My two costs stay the same. And now let's go back to this. What do I need? I need a lichen. I want a queen of pain. I want a juggernaut. I also want an enchantress. But that's pretty much the only one star I need. I don't need anti mage at this stage. It's nice to have a three star anti mage, but I know it's very far. We need six more anti mages. So the only one star I need is enchantress. I'm willing to sacrifice the rate for the enchantress to open up the rate for long druid at level five. Also, I want to keep my two star rates the same, which is unchanged when I go to level five. I want to increase my rate for three stars because I want lichens and I want venomancer. Those are three star units. I also want raises that I've been keeping. Those are three star units. So this decision to go up at this level was based on the rates I'm getting. And also you help me win the fights because I have five units on the table. So over here you'll see I'll be selling them and I'll be leveling up. And this is the first use of the rate table. And I think someone in the chat was saying, let's try elements. So I also put the tiny and the razor down, which is very fun to watch here. They're going to be stunned. And the ogre is already stunned himself once. The bounty stunned himself as well. And maybe the ogre is no, <laughs> instead of stunning the tiny, check the ogre away. So I was really surprised we won this fight because we're facing a two star clockwork, a two star ogre, and a razor. Simply because of the elemental stun, we won this fight. Now again, I know I have round, I know at level five, level five of the builder, I'm enjoying the highest rate for two stars. Maybe I want to stay here to get my two star units down. Maybe I want to level up again. So very soon we'll see this decision making again, and I'll use the rate table to assist me as well. I was fortunate enough to get Tiny to level 2, and that's really fun. Look at those units that get stunned by Tiny. <laughs> Tiny tossed the dragon out the moment he spins. The AI gets really nice sometimes. I was really hoping for stun here. <laughs> and the dragon was like, nope. Not stunning you. Not getting stunned. So we lost this round. Now again, I'm collecting units. And nothing really came to us this row. Now I took two park in the hope we find the Dragonite synergy. So this is the start of our Beast and Dragonite plan. Currently, we don't even have the Beast synergy. We don't have the worst. We have the worst synergy because I want my Tanny to be super tanky in the front line and stunning enemies from his passive. We lost this round again. I'm going to skip a little bit because I saw that. I saw the Beastmaster and I saw the Tempestor and the moment that happened, I knew we lost that round. So here we found a two star Furion and also we're collecting Queen of Pain. We're selling our mini. We're replacing a few units just to rearrange our unit composition so we have a better lineup. Nothing special here. What I want to show you guys is the decision making with whether I want to level up or not. Let's go back. Yeah, I think I actually skipped the forward a bit. So that's this here. So let's have a look at over here. I'm gonna stop here. Right now, I'm looking at, I'm currently on level 5. So what does level 5 bring to me and what does level 6 bring to me? Currently level 5, I have the highest rate for 2 cost units. I'll be going to a lower rate for 2 cost units if I go to level 6. And I'll be going to a lower rate for 1 cost unit if I go to level 6. What I do gain is the increased, co increased rate for 3 cost units and increased rate for 4 cost unit. 4 cost unit increased by almost four times the rate and three cost unit also goes to its highest peak at 9.29 so what that means for me is that if i level up i will be opening up for long druid lichen and venomancer while i'm reducing my rates of finding other druids for example natural prophet and train protector i'm also reducing my rate of finding enchantress and anti mage that i might want or even a task but i think it's acceptable at that point because we were enjoying, actually we're not enjoying a winning streak, that is. What we're planning is we want to open our rates up so we can level up quickly that we'll actually be enjoying the higher rates of the long drill. Because remember last fight we just lost the Beastmaster, the two-star Beastmaster. So we're not leveling up because of the winning streak, but rather we're leveling up because we want the higher rates of the three-star units. We're sacrificing rates for the one and two-star units now. We're going to fight into someone 
and I'm gonna skip a little bit and this time funny enough let me show you this one they're tiny chuck a uh, big tiny away before he can chuck someone away so this is really silly for me but the nice thing was we avoided all the damage from the juggernaut spin for the tiny and tiny ended up winning here simply because well he's a two-star warrior and he stunned oh no the razor stunned the juggernaut and tiny was able to finish him off here looking at over here let me show you what exactly happened over here remember how we said this is level six is the round the level with the highest at three the highest rate for three cost units i think this didn't prove my point but we did get lucky with lycan but we are sitting on level six as quickly as we can we didn't look into saving for round 10 or anything we got to level six opened the highest rate for three stars because we want razor one lycan we're happy to get some venomancer and we're lucky enough to be rewarded with two lycan so i'm going to skip a little bit we're just fighting golems getting some random items which is very nice so again looking over here let me show you guys because we're sitting on the highest rate for three star given by the table we're looking at one three star two three star three three star this is not by coincidence it is random i agree but this is indeed the highest rate to find three stars and you can see again we're at level six and this will be the theme of the game. We'll be continuously using this tape to help us guide our judgment, but we'll be using our own judgment to guide ourselves with winning streaks, losing streaks, and when to spin and when to do what. So we're not letting the table decide how to play, but rather we're using the table as a guide for us. Everything's okay. Again, here, I changed my formation because now all of a sudden I have three elves and having the wind ranger, oh, the wind runner, we really like to be in this position so the enemies are fighting to us and we can really line them up for a good shot okay i'm gonna pause here now one thing to know is this video was broken into two parts so now i'm gonna go to the second part looking over here okay let me have a look this is fine sorry for the delay so looking over here as you can see they're running into us this gives us a better line for the wind ranger and also this gives us more chance for Furion to be summoning trees so we really want to group here before round 20 after round 20 there's so many ranged units uh, so many casters like Disruptor, Tide, Conquer or even Medusa we really don't want to be grouping after round 20 we can group up to round 25 if you have a good initiator but if we don't we really want to spread out after round 20 a few decision making here as we can see I opt for keeping units instead of selling them for money because this is one of the things I'm constantly testing is that saving in the early game, yes, it helps us with economy, but what it renders us is to be matching pairs, to be opening up with more opportunities. So I opt for not saving, just for more opportunities. Looking over here, we put the enemy into us and while well, they put us into them, but um, anti-mage survived with the evasion and we will focus on finding his anti-mage which is very nice first. I'm going to skip a little bit. We won't be winning this fight because they all healed us. We found more enchantress. Again, I want to highlight. So this definitely proves the rate table is helpful because sitting at level six, we're finding more three stars than sitting at any other level. Of course, level seven is the same. So very soon we'll be going to level seven and I'll show you the decision making with the rate table as well. so here i'm desperately trying to juggle units i'm like hey i saw that necro so likely i won't be needing the abaddon but sitting on two enchantress means i really want more enchantress or i really want a long druid so we'll be fighting and during those skirmish because we have three warriors and three elves we're quite strong and with tiny he actually does some really good things when he touches the right target here we won the fight because Tiny tossed the axe away and focused on his shadow thing. Over here is when I consider whether I will save or want to level up. Let me show you this one over here. Currently I'm sitting on level 6 with 5 over 16 experience. This will take me 15 gold to level up. Now the decision making here partially is because I'm looking at the rate table. Partially is because I want to keep my winning streak. As you can tell I have been winning. 
and let me show you what is happening on the rate table. So on the rates table, we're looking at level six. Currently, we have lowered two star, two cost unit rate. We have the highest three star rate. We still want some three star units. And if we go to level seven, our three star rate are gonna stay the same. It's gonna stay the highest as they'll ever be. Meanwhile, we're gonna open up to higher risk to four star. This is at the cost of reduction to one star. We no longer need any one star except two enchantress. But it's so hard to find enchantress, I prefer my chance for finding a long druid. So in conjunction with my need to level up to keep my winning streak, so leveling up allows us to put additional unit, and that will enhance our chance of winning each round to maintain the winning streak. And this also kind of go align with our idea of finding the long druid. Because finding long druid is increased, while our two star and three star, our two cost and three cost unit rates are not changed. And from that table, we're kind of guided to go up because we're on the win streak, and also we want the same rates for two star and three star. I am losing a bit of saving. I could be having twenty gold right now, so two gold of saving I'm missing. But in exchange, I'm becoming stronger, so I can secure my three gold winning streak. So it's similar to a form of investment. So this form of investment is like you really go all in to protect your winning streak. The downside is if you lose your winning streak, you're actually left with a bad economic position. But if you do win several rounds after like a method like this, you actually are well off in terms of keeping a winning streak. Because sometimes you just need that one additional unit to sustain your winning streak. For example, over here, look how close we are fighting. I imagine if we didn't have the additional unit, but even if we did have the additional unit, we lost this one. So this is the drawback for this particular strategy I want to look at. Let me pause right here. The particular strategy I want to look at is to be leveling up regardless of winning or losing, because we want to be leveling up as quickly as we can to open up to one of the core units we're looking at, which is the long drill. And because we're leveling up, we're sacrificing a lot of economy while we're doing so. And to do this, what does this do is, it constantly takes, a, takes the savings we have into leveling up. We're not leveling up crazily every time we see there's a chance to level up, but rather we're leveling up to match different power curves and power specs of the other players. And as I'm speaking, we found the Dragon Knight, we're thinking of getting into dragons. And by finding the Dragon Knight, it means now I can look forward to get the Viper and I no longer need the Enchantress. I'm still very much inclined to go with the Tiny's because everyone in chat was saying, hey, Tiny, you know, with the Elemental Synergy, it's very nice. And I still want to go with the Flow. So looking over here, we're fighting Wolves and our position is okay for Wolves because they're going to jump into us because we're the Patek against Assassin position. I'm giving all my attack damage item to the Furium because previously I've seen a game where a Furium with a Mask of Madness actually summoned enough that he actually devastated me because of his summons. He managed to do six summons within the span of one round with a Mask of Madness. Actually really devastated me in that game. So we pick up the Doom for the Warrior Synergy and we sold the Juggernaut. Notice how I'm trying to pick all the synergies in the small skirmish as much as I can because this will really help us in the future game. Also, this is in line with our leveling up. Because we're leveling up, we enjoy the higher rate of finding higher tier units. So we really want to be keeping higher tier units and getting them to two star instead of keeping lower tier units. I know I'm at a low rate for the Juggernaut and Doom has increased rate of finding doom being on level seven so that's why i kept the doom despite the fact i have a disruptor waiting for the dragon for the ox synergy we did find another fury and having a fury and seeing the viper i think it's about time that I actually so over here as you can see i realized i didn't have any enchantress or any druid down so those two variants are gonna wait until we find a buddy for them so notice how this is the thing i mentioned at the start of the stream of the recording is that i want to test what happens if i'm running on a low savings build so throughout this build we won't be getting to 50 gold 
this whole idea of this test run is to see what happens when I'm running on low savings for the majority of the game. There's a reason to do this. The reason is I find that in my higher level games, in the kings and queens games, or even in higher rank games, rook 9 plus, the pace of the game is so fast. Sometimes saving means I'm losing a lot of, a lot of health, and sometimes saving to 50 gold is no longer worth it. I feel like it's so much worth it if I don't save, and I roll a bit, I spend a bit to be finding the units I need to stay on top of my health. Because what happens in the later stage of the game, everyone becomes super desperate for health. And they become so desperate for health. Let me, let me pause over here. This was one of the top rows. So they become so desperate for health that they actually start rolling desperately when their life goes below 30%. What I wanted to do is constantly be on the lookout to keep my life higher and keep keeping it higher so there's less opportunity for my life to go below 30%. Instead of, instead of reactive, I want to be proactive with health. So that's the idea of having a low saving, is to maintain health as high as I can. Now remember I said earlier about keeping Doom because we're enjoying a higher rate for a purple unit. We really hit the jackpot getting a two-star Doom. And this is considered even be better than a long drill here because we can't make use of the long drill, but we can really make use of the doom. So this was very nice. Now very soon, I'll be looking at another decision making, which whether I want to level to level eight or not. There's a few things that go through my mind. One is that I want to be placing the dragons down. So here I'm even taking the viper and planning to which you know I'll take off. What I'm looking at here is I still want my warriors, I might still want my anti-mage and everything else can be replaced with the dragon. But the reason I'm not doing so is because I still enjoy the elemental buff and also my dragon is only one star. What I feel is that after round 15, having one star dragons, especially one star viper and one star dk is not going to do enough for them to be deserving on the board when we have enough synergy on the board so let's go over here we did find our razor now let's have a look on this row we did find our razor and we did find the dk this really makes me want to go into dragons asap once i get my two star dk or once we get our two star park or two star viper i just need one of those pairs to match and i'll be swapping them around because this is only a 1 star win runner, and this is only a 2 star Fearium, which is only 1.5 star. Round 20. We're going to be fighting round 20 with relative ease, and Tiny tossed one to the corner, just for the lows. Now, after round 20, is when the decision making comes. I'm going to pause here. Look at my gold. I'm on 32 gold, and I have been winning a few skirmishes. Now, notice how the test was to be spending gold to be sustaining ourselves with in terms of health so we're actually looking at protecting our health pool at the very early stage of the game around round 15 till now so we're going to keep that idea in mind we're going to be spending to be keeping our health high so two things we can do right now we can be rolling and we can be leveling up let's see what happens when we roll and what happens when we level up on the race table if we roll at this stage we're looking at 3.79 for a dragon knight if we roll at level 8, we're looking at 5.69. So it's almost an increase of about 60% in terms of rate to getting a Dragonite. So 3 to go to 5. So the reason I'm looking at Dragonite and not everything else is because I want my last Dragonite. I feel that's the most crucial part of my build. And a 2-star Dragonite, it's incredible at this stage of the game. A 2-star Dragonite can carry us to round 30. And Given that most other rates stay the same, we also open up the legendary rate. I feel that it's worth it to be level to level eight instead of rolling at level seven for dragon land. So let's go back to the video, and I'm gonna level up here. So after seeing my rates, I think it's worth it to be leveling the dragon land, uh, to be leveling up for the dragon land rates and for the legendary. I saw my room runner, as you can see, we had a. But the collection of good items for Dragonite now, even though he's one star, because I, really, I sold my unit so that we really want him to be two star. Actually, did I take the item from the Dragonite? Or did I take Oh, I took it from the Fury, and that's right. 
<laughs> so Renard's still here. I took those like, good items from the Ethereum, and now we hit our little power spike with the two-star Razor. We have so much airy claim potential. Let's see if the rates have been kind. So looking over here, the rates are nothing. So this is something I want to show you guys as well. So other than the rain management of the positioning, very soon we'll be looking at rolling. And we're rolling before we hit enough savings. There's two reasons why we want to be rolling. Here I'm just spying around people because I won't be having time to roll on this round. Two reasons why I want to roll is because when we are one Dragonite away from the two-star Dragonite, we're two Vipers away and one Parker away. We want those units ASAP because they are the core of our builds. We didn't get the beast in the G out because we couldn't find the non druid and the enchantress wasn't effective at two star. It was better if we could get enchantress to three star, but we can't. So right now we're sticking with the elemental synergy and we're sticking with the dragon synergy. Seeing how I'm not losing my rounds, I'm inclined to be spending my gold to be protecting my health again. So knowing that it's gonna cost a lot, let me pause here. So looking at our rate table over here, knowing that how much it costs to go to level 8 to level 9, what really changes is our increased rate for 4 star, four cost and increased rate for 5 cost. But this jump was much higher compared to this one. So I think I will use my remaining gold to be rolling instead of going up a level. Let's see what happens over here. So as you can see, I'm rolling right now. And I'm rolling into my savings. I found a Riper, which is great. I found a Lycan. I'm still rolling. So you might say, hey, why are you doing this? You're not losing. Why are you rolling? This is to test this idea of protecting health. If I can protect my health as much as I can, I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of saving to protect my health at any round after round 10. So, this, someone also asked me about this on my stream while we were doing the live stream. They were asking, hey, why aren't you, you know, saving, why aren't you saving up for the late game? What I said was because this is a test account, we're also testing many things. That was one of the tests I really want to check. Is that while I am strong, I want to be stronger. So guarantee my chance of not losing any health and also guarantee I punish the player that meets me with most health loss. So I really want to be punished before they hit any power spike or power curve. Say the troll warlord, say the techies, or say a particular mage you're looking for. Again, we're at round 24. This is probably the only time that I'm counting what units I have and if I can sell them and if enough units are needed. This is the only time I'll be saving again because I know round 25 is a neutral run and we can really capitalize on the savings. So I'm going to skip a little bit. Here we're going to fight here in health and this is one of the reasons. Being the strongest as we can when we face those powerhouse health lineups we actually have a great chance of defeating them instead of losing massively to the helps. So this strategy really works well when there's players that place elves and there's players that really hit this spike around this range of the time. So those players are Druids, elves, and I think that's pretty much that's all there is. The Druids are the elves that are the main concern in the current meta. We found our Viper, which is very nice. Finally, we hit our two-star Viper, and I'm counting units that I can sell to make some gold because this is round 25. We want to be on the 10th multiple. I'm keeping the Ogre in the off chance I want to run mages with my lineup because I already have two mages down there. So let's have a look. We're going to win with these because we have a two-star Viper, which is really critical in terms of fighting boss because Viper's, at, Viper's ability slows down the monster. The monster's attack speed, that is. If the monster attack speed is slow, we really enjoy uh, killing the monster and focusing it. So as you can see over here, right after round 26, I still want my powers back. I'm looking at my units and my composition. What I want is, I want my Dragon Knight. There's two ways to do it. I can be leveling up, or I can, let me go back a bit. 
I can be leveling up here, or I can have as a unit. So we did look at the rate table previously. I said it was too costly to go to level nine. Now that I have most of the lower tier units I need, I'll actually enjoy the higher rate of leveling up for my purple unit and enjoy a higher rate for legendaries. Now, again, I'm sitting pretty comfortably with health. And usually with our normal gameplay, I won't be leveling up. I'll be trying to save to 50 gold. But this particular idea I'm testing is that I want to be stronger constantly to protect our health. I don't want an off chance that we meet an elf again, or we meet a druid again, that we lose a chunk of health. I really want to protect our health before we get to the threshold of 50% or 40 or even 30%. So this is a proactive way of protecting health at the trade-off of savings. So this really limits our gain in the late game unless we get a good growth because we'll be limited in terms of economy. But this guarantees us to be the top three position. A unit you know I really like is Templar Assassin. Two reasons. One is that not only do we activate the elf evasion at 25%, she is a great unit to be an off tank. She is a great distraction as she can jump in or stay there to be distracting the enemy. Let's have a look what she does. She's there with the Viper. She's distracting three units and she's killing the Shadow Thing, which is the squishiest. This time, they did a great job of killing the back line while my front line won the fight as well. This is a mage, by the way. So as you can see, I have no saving as of now. I'm level 9, I run 26. And a lot of players are losing massively in terms of health. So me with this other player, we're the only ones that stay relatively healthy in terms of health. So again, to go with my idea of looking for units, what I'm going to do here is another test. So, remember previously I said Templar Assassin is a great assassin? This time I really want to see if I can push it to get my Liking and my Doom and my Razor to get the spells off. If this test, does this show that a Crystal Maiden is better when I have 8 units? So, we're really testing a few things here with each round. And I'm going through this with you guys. So over here, let me go back for a sec. Our Doom did get his Doom off, but unfortunately, the Laundry got his Bear off. But we were getting our Razors off quick enough so we actually killed the enemy. I know this is not the best test because I am running on 9 units, so we are quite strong. But each of those small tests is I want to see what unit synergizes well and what level does this unit work well for me in a particular high rank game. As you can see, I have almost no savings right now. So I am almost like someone who's in those positions. They have the same gold and level as I do. They are level 9, they're desperate, they want to protect their health, they can't afford to lose. But similar here, it's a reverse strategy where I put myself in this position where I'm strong right now, but I won't be strong in a few rounds time because I don't have the economy. The goal is to kill most players and to be top 3. Afterwards, as you can see, this is a goblin buildup. So I really wanted to punish the goblin before they found this buildup. Now, because they found this buildup, this is a late game strategy that came to mind, and I know it works well because I'm a goblin player, is that we need magic damage. Because goblins are res resilient to physical, but they really, really lose to magical damage. And seeing how there's only four players left, I know there's one in three chance of me finding those goblins. If I find them, I need my mages, I need the magical damage. And having three mage here was actually a plus for us, because the razor does increase damage, Viper and the Puck is going to be a top damage dealer. Looking over here, Puck, Doom, Razor was a top damage dealer. So we're going to be sitting on level 9 for a while because the fact is we have no economy. But the good thing is we protect our health enough, we have fast in the pace of the game, and most players are already dead. So we can really narrow down the players we'll be facing and try to counter them or defend against them. Because right now we're looking at the elf player nose and the goblin player male. Again, we have no saving, but guess what? We're saving now. It's like a 
reverse save each other we protected enough health that we can afford to be saving and this is around 30 so nothing special can happen because we're really strong despite the fact we only have a one star dragon knight the viper and the doom is actually doing great work over here even the tiny is doing something first so notice how a two star doom actually do a quite good amount of damage and despite the fact we missed one we still kill both and I was saying we really needed a Dragon Knight on the stream and we found the Dragon Knight we needed. That was a much needed upgrade. So right now I still want to keep my mages simply for the fact I know a Templar wouldn't be doing much against the Goblins. While the mages can do great things against Goblins because that's my major competitor over here. So here we fought into the Elves. I also know that Physical attack is pretty much limited on elves simply because they have massive amount of evasion, about 32-33% evasion. And having magic damage really counter both elves and goblins. So this is my late game decision making. Notice how I start to save because I know leveling or rolling here won't provide me any spikes anymore. Uh, I can comfortably save with the health I've been saving from my early game decision making. So as you can see, the table of rates is no longer that much of assistance to us now that we hit the late game. I feel the rate table is the best helpfulness comes at level 4, level 5, level 6 and level 7 builder. It guides us if you want to level up. It also guides us if you want to stay at a particular level to be rolling for your five, for your 3 stars and for your 3 cost units or 2 cost units. Let's have a look at the following fights. Each of the fights as you can see, if I'm losing, I'll be adjusting my formation. If I'm winning, I'll keep the formation because I know this formation works against the defending team, uh, against the offensive team from their side. Now, a little thing to notice here, I noticed I was looking around, I noticed he was one techies away to a two-star techie. That's why I'm keeping this techie because as we know, there are only 10 legendaries in each of the pool. And if I take one techies, it's less likely for him to find his two-star techie. Here we're looking around. What we're looking for is actually a crystal maiden. Because I didn't feel comfortable having a crystal maiden that is one star. But because we can't find any better mages, we'll make do with a crystal maiden. Let's skip a little bit. So over here, I think this is a fight I realize. Hey, maybe my position needs to be adjusted. But seeing how the anti-mage actually found the tide, I was really glad. And also, our Crystal Maiden actually enabled the Doom to be Dooming the Long Druid before he can cast his bear. And this positioning actually allowed us to really pull them in for the DK to do his final attacks. So we actually didn't survive, but we actually lost with minimum casualties in terms of health loss. We found another techie. <laughs> we also found a dragon knight. <laughs> so here I'm looking back. I was like, did he find his techie? Oh, he found his techie. So no more techies for me. <laughs> and I took the dragon knight. <laughs> so if he didn't find his techie, I might have been taking two techies right now. I really want the razor to go align with uh, magic damage because I know physical damage is no longer what we want. Of course, techie is a great physical damage dealer, but the goblins, they have so much armor that the physical damage just tickles them. I remember last game, Last round, we were kind of struggling with the formation of ball. So two reasons here, let me go back. So two reasons why I swap out my anti-mage and my units is last round, we got lucky by hitting the anti-mage onto the tie. But still, we were kind of pushed in by the enemy. So we lost that fight. Not only we got lucky, also we saw the do so. I also noticed the positioning of his techies, which on his unit composition, he was here. By being there, I know on reverse mirror image, he'll be over here. So placing my bounty on, my not bounty on, anti mage over here, I have 50% chance of finding the player and cutting right through his techies, preventing him from casting anything for a good time. And that is what exactly happened. Anti mage delayed the techies for long enough, so doom doom the techies. So his massive burst of physical damage was cut short by us. And although we're losing. The rounds, we're not losing too much health. And knowing how much health we've been saving from the early game, this is really paying off for us. And as a Dragon Knight, 
very good rose first and this is the time I took off the crystal maiden but I'm very much inclined to go to level 10 as quickly as I can to get my mage lineup up to get enough nuke damage against the goblins because we're still losing to them I'm gonna skip a little bit <laughs> it's the fun one I'll actually show you guys this one <laughs> I was like oh no I forgot dragon is a range unit we can't stun it and not only that tiny is right there so what's gonna happen is tiny is gonna to toss the dragon into the best defensive position there is <laughs> now it's gonna cleaving my units away and I'm just face palming myself right now <laughs> I was like whatever done with the tiny right <laughs> I was like tiny to OP we managed to kill the dragon. It gave us the best item in the game at this stage, which is the uh, ring of regeneration. And unfortunately enough, unfortunately enough, we found our crystal maiden. Remember, we want the lineup to have three mages, and I felt that crystal maiden is good enough for now. What I'm looking at is the icon. I'm keeping a lichen because I wanted the warrior armor buff, but it's becoming increasingly less effective. See, he swaps, I swap. <laughs> this is the funny thing. In the late game, it's a dance of units. He swap, I swap, and I swap, he swaps. <laughs> but funny enough, I actually didn't find the one I was looking for, the goblin guy. We found the druid guy. And his tide was in a good spot. We'll be fighting him. And our two DKs with good enough splash damage, hopefully they will clean up first to be not losing too much health. But unfortunately here, we did lose massively 15 health. Usually this is what happens around round 20 to round 30. But because we protect the health high enough, that this only happened at this stage of the game. But I'm okay, because I know the Goblin player will counter the Druid player very hard because they are physical damage. Ah, there's a bug here. Unfortunate for him. We've been experiencing a lot of those bugs lately that the units stop moving. I know it's a scissor paper rock. I can counter the goblin player with my magic damage. I know the goblin player counters the last player. And I know I'm countered by the druids because I can't hit them. They have evasion. But being in a in scissor paper rock situation, having higher health means I can outlast him on a 50 50 chance. He will meet the goblin player. And also, knowing that I just lost to him means I really do want to level up again to protect my health. So this whole concept of protecting health is going to go throughout the entire game for this game. I'm going to rearrange a bit. And <laughs> here I was like, I better check where the tech is. So I was like, okay, he moved his tech is. And I want to find the lone druid now and the disruptor instead of the, instead of the tech is because I felt they are more impactful than the tech is. Let's see if that proves me right. So here, I found the Disruptor. I felt that the Disruptor is more impactful. So I quickly moved the Anti-Mage on that end. And funny enough, the Doom got the Doom off before the Techies did anything. So we won this, we won this round very convincingly. See how even with a 2 star Anti-Mage, if you juggle him hard enough, he can make magic in the late game. Just because you delayed the Disruptor, just because you delayed the Techies, you actually have a good board in the late game. I'm constantly checking my mic to see if it's not muted because that happened to me too many times. Here again, we're on level 10 and despite the fact we survived, I'm still rolling because what I'm looking for is a razor. I think a razor would really help my lineup in the form of unit synergy and in terms of AoE. I finally find my razor after this long search. Two things I want to note here. I've been saving those purple units not because I want to use them, but rather I want them to reduce the rate of the purple units I'm looking for, which is the Dragonite and the keep of the Light. I keep buying purple units while I'm rolling for increased rate to find the unit I'm looking for. And that was a Blink Tide followed up by a Dusa. But because we have two Razors and we clean up a majority of his units, after that our DKs went to town with the rest of his units that are doomed, that are amplified by magic damage. And over here, I was very glad to see the goblin player losing to us because we're still very much in the scissor purple rock situation, but we're actually a paper that's defeating scissors and rock right now. So I no longer need the power spike. I can save again. And <laughs> noticing how the elf player just lost to the goblin player, I am much more comfortable with my lineup because I know we have great amount of magic damage. Two razors are actually stronger than a three-star razor, two two-star razors. 
because the magic damage can amplify the amount of by the magic of the three mages. So I think I'm pretty confident against this player. Oh, this is the second thing I want to show you guys. Notice how over here he moved all his lineup back because what happened was he realized my anti mage was bullying his disruptor and bullying his techies way too much. So he moved his entire lineup back. <laughs> he also had a refresher on the timber. So <laughs> we were all watching and we were like, please, mommy was like, that timber, did he have a refresher? Like, what is he thinking, right? He's got a spare timber he can sell to get a refresher, but he's reluctant to do that. Well, I would have sold the timber ages ago, even for one star timber. I'm looking at him. I was like, huh. He changed his entire lineup simply because I had a two star anti mage. So, what I want to see is if I take my anti mage back, <laughs> would he change the lineup back again? <laughs> so, I put on the TA purposely to see if he would change his lineup according to my lineup now let's have a look if he mirrors me also i think the ta is better for the trolls compared to the anti mage over here because what the anti mage provides is mana burn and we can't really mana burn the trolls and ta provides a little more tankiness first and usually some of us call the trolls the dream breaker sometimes when we don't have enough health here the draw the trolls at level 40 really shatters dreams but fortunately enough for me and him, we had enough health to be surviving the trolls. Which are some of the strongest fights we ever had. So, Dundred, I'm buying the laundry to increase my chance of the purple I want to find. The purple I want to find is actually a keep of the light, to be honest. And also a DK. After seeing the DK, I'm more inclined to go with the DK instead of the keep of the light. And we're still looking. We'll be looking for a while. Notice here I didn't take back my anti mage. And this partially was I want to see if he changes positioning. And instantly his tech is on the front line. <laughs> and funny enough, we also doomed him before he got his cast off. Because Doom with CM is so much stronger. And looking over here, I think what happened to him as well is that the Doom actually doomed his techies before he got anything off. And even though we lost here. I had a look here. I was like, so you decide to put your line up to the front because you're no longer scared of my anti mage. Maybe I should put my anti mage up. And it's the unit juggling again. Here we're looking. And instead of the anti mage, we found an even better candidate. So remember how he put his units forward because I took back my anti mage. Now what's going to happen is. He's not going to have time to adjust, or he didn't adjust according to my tide that I've been hiding on my bench. So he haven't seen me use a tide at all. See, I'm moving a tide. Let me pause here. I can see his units are all in this section. I'm moving a tide, so I'll be facing all his units on a mirror match. Let's have a look what happens. So hey, sorry, <laughs> that was bad. Sorry for that. So let's go back. I actually knocked over my mic. Hopefully it didn't make too much noise for you guys. So looking over here, the tide is positioned perfectly for his ball of units. And this is a surprise tide. He never seen I used a one star tide before. All of a sudden I'm using a two star tide. And the two reads are just annihilated everything. I refreshed the tech, he couldn't do it for him. And this was the end for him. So to summarize, I'm gonna go to the game screen. I'm gonna pause here. To summarize a few things, what we wanted to test was this particular method I'm using. It's called protecting health and sacrificing income method. So although we're on a lower health than most a lower income than most players, we're protecting our health at every stage of the round after round 15. And by doing so, we sacrifice economy and we gain a bit of more health because we have more units up, we're refreshing for more units, and we have more two stars than most players at that particular stage of the round despite the fact we're pretty comfortable on the top few position. This really worked well because in the end, every bit of health really helped because seeing me, I still had 13%. Imagine if I lost to a Druid massively in the mid game because Druid really counters every build in the mid game or even losing to the Elves in the mid game, which we did lose. Now, losing to them would 
take about 15 to even 20% health off because they have so many summons, so much evasion, they're not likely to die. The second thing I want to conclude is that using the rate table seem to be very helpful in the mid stage of decision making. Do I want to stay at level 4? Do I want to stay at level 5? What happens when I stay at level 6? This is to assist us, this is not to tell us what to do because we are still the decision makers here. We still make decisions based on our winning streak, losing streak, and the units we want, and how much health we have. This is to simply help us to guide us with better decision making in terms of probability. And the last thing I want to summarize is that because we have punished other players for being saving, because we're not saving, we're actually punishing players that are not saving. By doing so, we're actually killing players off much quicker than what would have happened. Looking at here, round 42, we did go to round 42, but in reality is at round 30, or even 29, we have killed most of the players off. By doing so really allows us to narrow down what are the players that we're going to face in the late game and adjust accordingly. Here we're adjusting to mages because we know both elves and goblins, we can't deal with physical damage dragon knight. And because of that, I didn't go into do so, I didn't go into tide because I know I'll just be doing physical damage. I went into the mages to adjust accordingly because it's only a few players I need to adjust to and happens both of them are very susceptible to magic damage. Okay, so this is it for this guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide, which I used the race table and I introduced a new strategy of protecting health in the mid game. So hopefully you guys find this one as helpful as I did and please remember to subscribe and like and thank you guys so much for the, all the supports I've been getting and I'll see you next time.